Jane Austen, Persuasion Chapter 1 Sir Walter Elliot of Kellynch Hall in Somersetshire was a man who, for his own amusement, never took up any book but the Barentage. There he found occupation for an idle hour and consolation in a distressed one. There his faculties were roused into admiration and respect by contemplating the limited remnant of the earliest patents. There any unwelcome sensations arising from domestic affairs changed naturally into pity and contempt as he turned over the almost endless creations of the last century. And there, if every other leaf were powerless, he could read his own history with an interest which never failed. This was the page at which the favorite volume always opened. Elliot of Kellynch Hall Walter Elliot, born March 1, 1760, married July 15, 1784, Elizabeth, daughter of James Stevenson, Esquire, of South Park in the country of Gloucester, by which lady, who died 1800, he has issue Elizabeth, born June 1, 1785, Anne, born August 9, 1787, a stillborn son, November 5, 1789, Mary, born November 20th, 1791. Precisely such had the paragraph originally stood from the printer's hands, but Sir Walter had improved it by adding, for the information of himself and his family, these words after the date of Mary's birth. Married, December 16th, 1810. Charles, son and heir of Charles Musgrove, Esquire of Uppercross, in the county of Somerset and by inserting most accurately the day of the month on which he had lost his wife. Then followed the history and rise of the ancient and respectable family, in the usual terms. How it had been first settled in Cheshire, how mentioned in Dugdale, serving the office of high sheriff, representing a borough in three successive parliaments, exertions of loyalty and dignity of baronet, in the first year of Charles II, with all the Marys and Elizabeths they had married, forming altogether two handsome duodecimo pages, and concluding with the arms and motto, Principal Seat, Kellynch Hall, in the county of Somerset. And Sir Walter's handwriting again in this finale, Heir Presumptive, William Walter Elliot, Esquire, great-grandson of the second Sir Walter. Vanity was the beginning and the end of Sir Walter Elliot's character, vanity of person and of situation. He had been remarkably handsome in his youth, and, at fifty-four, was still a very fine man. Few women could think more of their personal appearance than he did, nor could the valet of any new-made lord be more delighted with the place he held in society. He considered the blessing of beauty as inferior only to the blessing of baronetcy and the Sir Walter Elliot, who united these gifts, was the constant object of his warmest respect and devotion. His good looks and his rank had one fair claim on his attachment, since to them he must have owed a wife of a very superior character to anything deserved by his own. Lady Elliot had been an excellent woman, sensible and amiable, whose judgment and conduct, if they might be pardoned the youthful infatuation which made her Lady Elliot, had never required indulgence afterwards. She had humoured or softened or concealed his failings and promoted his real respectability for seventeen years. And though not the very happiest being in the world herself, had found enough in her duties, her friends, and her children to attach her to life and make it no matter of indifference to her when she was called on to quit them. Three girls, the two eldest, sixteen and fourteen, was an awful legacy for a mother to bequeath, an awful charge, rather, to confide to the authority and guidance of a conceited silly father. She had, however, one very intimate friend, a sensible, deserving woman, who had been brought by strong attachment to herself to settle close by her, in the village of Kellynch. And on her kindness and advice, Lady Elliot mainly relied for the best help and maintenance of the good principles and instruction which she had been anxiously giving her daughters. This friend and Sir Walter did not marry, whatever might have been anticipated on that head by their acquaintance. Thirteen years had passed away since Lady Elliot's death, 
and they were still near neighbors and intimate friends, and one remained a widower and the other a widow. That Lady Russell, of steady age and character and extremely well provided for, should have no thought of a second marriage, needs no apology to the public, which is rather apt to be unreasonably discontented when a woman does marry again than when she does not. But Sir Walter's continuing in singleness requires explanation. Be it known, then, that Sir Walter, like a good father, having met with one or two private disappointments in very unreasonable applications, prided himself on remaining single for his dear daughter's sake. For one daughter, his eldest, he would really have given up anything, which he had not been very much tempted to do. Elizabeth had succeeded, at sixteen, to all that was possible of her mother's rights and consequence, and being very handsome, and very like himself, her influence had always been great, and they had gone on together most happily. His two other children were of very inferior value. Mary had acquired a little artificial importance by becoming Mrs. Charles Musgrove, but Anne, with an elegance of mind and sweetness of character, which must have placed her high with any people of real understanding, was nobody with either father or sister. Her word had no weight. Her convenience was always to give away. She was only Anne. To Lady Russell, indeed, she was a most dear and highly valued goddaughter, favorite and friend. Lady Russell loved them all, but it was only in Anne that she could fancy the mother to revive again. A few years before, Anne Elliot had been a very pretty girl, but her bloom had vanished early, and as even in its height, her father had found little to admire in her. So totally different were her delicate features and mild dark eyes from his own. There could be nothing in them, now that she was faded and thin, to excite his esteem. He had never indulged much hope. He had now none of ever reading her name in any other page of his favorite work. All equality of alliance must rest with Elizabeth, for Mary had merely connected herself with an old country family of respectability and large fortune, and had therefore given all the honor and received none. Elizabeth would, one day or other, marry suitably. It sometimes happens that a woman is handsomer at twenty-nine than she was ten years before, and generally speaking, if there has been neither ill health nor anxiety, it is a time of life at which scarcely any charm is lost. It was so with Elizabeth, still the same handsome Miss Elliot that she had begun to be thirteen years ago and Sir Walter might be excused, therefore, in forgetting her age, or at least be deemed only half a fool, for thinking himself and Elizabeth as blooming as ever, amidst the wreck of the good looks of everybody else. For he could plainly see how old all the rest of his family and acquaintance were growing. Anne Haggard, Mary Corse, every face in the neighborhood worsting, and the rapid increase of the crow's foot about Lady Russell's temples had long been a distress to him.